we're coming in loud and clear. Everything looks good, sounds good. Episode 97, Artistic Freedom. If I sound different, you can guess why. Uh, if you guess it right, you get a uh, round of applause. Uh, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. As usual, America, fuck yeah! I appreciate you. I appreciate you all. Give me a thumbs up. If it sounds good, it looks good, and everything's ready to rock and roll. Hope you guys are having a really good week. This episode uh, will probably be a bit of a short one, uh, and I said that last time, but I mean it even more this time, just because uh, the day is young and I have things to do. But I do enjoy you guys being here. We're going to talk about this uh, subject for a little bit because last week we talked about whether or not women need men. And I got some visceral reactions, <laughs> as I expected. And then uh, this week I asked, do men need women? And I got some pretty boring responses, as I expected. And I have a good reasoning why uh, and why I expected that. You guys could hypothesize all you want uh, while we get to the questions here in a minute. And I say hello to everybody, but send me your answers. Why do you think people respond so uh, aggressively towards women being asked if they need men? But when it's men at being asked or people being asked whether or not men need women, it's kind of crickets. So, Or it's at least very tame. You guys let me know. Let me know what you think. Why is that? What's the deal? Why is one spicy and one's kind of boring? Because I, I actually know. I, I know why. But I want to see what you think. So if you guys are enjoying the deep voice... Uh, it's only because I just got over being pretty sick the last couple of days. Thanks to meeting a thousand people this weekend at Clovis, whatever hat days it was. Uh, it was awesome. Last few days, days have been a blur. I've been trying to work and trying to get things done and trying to rest. And, oh, man, wild, wild. I think I lost like 20 pounds. I've been sweating it off. Warm days. Okay, Brody Jade says, sounds good. Looks good. Awesome. Okay, let's see here. Make sure everything works. No! Oh, God. Okay. So what's up, Lenora? Thanks for being on here. Man, my voice does sound different. I think this is broadcast mode. Let's do this. Uh, what's up, Christy? Thanks for sending the flag. Appreciate you. Thank you, ladies, for being on here tonight. I got four people watching. This is great. I'm not sure why there's not four, uh, but that's okay with me. I got you, and that's all I need. Uh, since that's all I need, I might as well just put it out there real quick that Linda... <laughs> going to be true. Linda's awesome. And Michelle, if you jump on here and you relay the message to Linda, then uh, we're doing good. I hope you guys are all good, by the way, and that everybody is having a good week. If you guys saw us at the Big Hat Days this last weekend, is it, it could be my hearing too. I'm like hearing my voice and it sounds so different. I don't know. Anyway, but this Big Hat Day event was a definite success. We sold a lot of stuff. We uh, raffled off a bunch of merch and a bunch of giveaway stuff we did a bunch of fake tattoos i mean we really we were one of the busiest uh booths actually and a few people had mentioned it they walked over to us and said hey what's your secret and i think it's because there's really not been a tattoo booth at any of these uh events at really i think ever so we're going to be doing them again and we'll get back into it uh next year maybe even some of the other events that clovis does yeah it'll be fun so next year will be better bigger and batter but if you guys didn't see all the merch you should you should have went you missed it there was some cool stuff people have been messaging me about it asking if i still have some so yes it's in the shop no it's not available online maybe it will be in the future but right now it's not <clears throat> christy says wait what sick you never per you haha <laughs> so uh i'll tell you the reason why i'm sick <laughs> yes brody i do i do think it probably sounds deeper in my head it definitely does but i'm also very muffled right now so i not only working myself to the bone all weekend trying to get things ready and set up, but the event was 24-7, really. I mean, yeah, it ends at 6 uh, one day, and maybe 6 or 7 the next day, like 5. Uh, but it's an all-day thing. You got to pack up. You got to tear down. You got to pack up and tear down and then tear down and put it away and then take it to this place and drop it off at that place and organize and put it back and talk to customers, do fake tattoos, sell stuff and merchandise, ring up, say hi, that kind of thing. Not complaining, just saying that it's, it was a lot more than I expected. Although I expected a lot, it was it was more than I expected. And so I didn't eat well, I didn't sleep well, and I slept like 45 minutes one night. And even though I had a lot of help, it was a lot of standing, a lot of working, and I did not eat well. I'll tell you that right now. I didn't sleep well. And I've been on a diet, right? I'm on a mission right now to get to a low percentage of body fat, something that I've decided I want to do. Especially as I'm getting older, it's harder and harder to do. So I've been having fun doing this weight loss thing and uh, 
it's not really weight loss. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to lose body fat. I'd right, like to stay the same weight, to be honest. <coughs> it's really not weight loss. It's body fat um, that I'm trying to get rid of. I'm actually trying to gain weight, technically, so conundrum. But my point is, uh, doing all that at the same time, not eating and working myself to the bone, I think being exposed to a 1,000 people in two days was probably... That was probably it. Okay. Dambria, thanks for being on here. We'll talk to you. Uh, Christy says you need a swig today, if ever. Uh, you know what? Cigars and whiskey are going to be off the table for today. Actually, they're literally on the table, but n they're off the table for today. <clears throat> okay, so nobody's answering me. Let's see here. About uh, So the question I asked was, why do you think it's more spicy when the question's asked, do women need men? And when I ask, do men need women, it's kind of boring and kind of crickets and not so spicy, right? That The responses aren't so visceral. Right. So. Wh why is that? You guys let me know. Let me know why you think that is. And we'll get into the Q&A and we will start this episode off. Correct. Let's see if we can get some background music. What do we got here? Let's see if we can get something cool. OK, so I did ask the question online and you guys gave me some responses. Here we go. I'm going to I'm going to read a couple of them real quick. I haven't actually screened any of these as usual. So hopefully I should probably do that now, to be honest, because. This is a good question. Okay, well, here's the first response. So I asked, does a man need a woman? And somebody responded, yes. And the show could be over right now. You're 100% right. Yes, uh, yes, a man needs a woman. Uh, over. Okay, episode uh, within 19 minutes, we are finished. Not too bad. Totally kidding. <clears throat> Gabriel says, seemed like uh, hat days got everyone sick. Uh, very possibly. And yeah, um, it was at this moment that he awesome. knew he fucked Matter up. In fact, a few of the girls in the shop don't feel good. So, yes, it was terrible, but it was worth it. Okay. Akilo Zero Four Three Zero. Uh, what's up? What's good, chat? What's good, chat? What's good? What's good? Maybe my name's chat now. That's cool. Because the question. Okay. So, Chrissy's saying because the question looked like last week's, ha ha ha, I had to double take. Yeah, um, so it's just not that spicy to ask, does a man need a woman? Whatever, like nobody really, it's not that good of a question. That's why I don't think this episode's going to be very long because it's not going to be very exciting. I hate to say it. it's not my fault or yours. It's just not that interesting of a topic so we can get to uh, some of that and maybe just swing right back into why women need men or do they need men because that seems to be more uh, more controversial for some reason. Uh, so get in the chat and let me know what you think about those and I'll read some of the other questions or the responses actually. So uh, we got another one on here. So to the question, does a man need a woman? It says, I'm sorry, do men need women? It says, uh, absolutely, yes. Cool. And then there's another one. And it says, yes. So these answers are really boring in comparison to last week's. Okay, here's another one. Here's one that takes a little bit more effort. It says, need. So does a, does a man need a woman? The response was, need? No. Want? Yeah. To make babies also is a want. Very, very interesting. So people do think that to make babies is a want because I think there's you can have a want to have babies or not. But I also do think that before it's a want, it's biological far before it's a want. I would actually say that the desire to have uh, SEX is probably uh, linked and you cannot be separated, uh, at least in my mind. I don't think you can separate it from the, also the desire to reproduce because I think they're at least biologically tied even though you don't think it is conceptually. So people think they can separate the two, and I just don't believe that that's true. I just think because we have contraceptives today that it makes it possible for people to be delusional about whether or not sex should be tied to making babies. So it makes us uh, live in a bit of la-la land. <coughs> I will be coughing a little bit throughout this episode, so good thing you guys are not in the room and you're just through the microphone. We will be just fine. <coughs> okay. Uh, Brody says, I think they don't answer because the truth hurts and they know you'll be 100% honest. Yeah, maybe maybe they don't answer for that, but I don't think so because they have no problem answering if a woman needs a man. They, they have no problem with that. Okay, so Damber says, I believe it's kind of a, giving that, a given that men need women. They make it very clear they need us. Very interesting. I dig that. Uh, Mikey says, everyone of no matter what passed through a woman to exist, everyone of no matter what 
everyone, no matter what, passed through a woman to exist. I think it came out of the butthole part. And Mikey, I do agree. I absolutely think he did. <coughs> uh, Damber says men need to not only reproduce, but they need nurturing. Very interesting. Very interesting. Wayne, what's up? Thanks for being on here. Hope all is well. And didn't see a Clovis big hat days, but that's okay. Uh, I won't hold it against you till next time at least. <laughs> so Wayne says, absolutely. She keeps me focused. She keeps me grounded. I'm a train wreck without a woman in my life. That's awesome that you would admit that. Uh, Brody says, I think women are delusional and think abortion is healthcare. Uh, women abs have the women have the luxury of potentially being delusional and oftentimes it turns out to be true. Not all women are necessarily delusional, but it's very often, especially today, because things are running so smoothly in this world, as chaotic as it seems, it's actually built really well and uh, you're not starving here in this country at least. So it's very easy to be delusional, uh, at least if you're female. If you're male, it's a little harder, although it's getting easier for men to be delusional too because they are now sucking on the teat of government uh, and so they have that fortune as well, unfortunately. <clears throat> That's awesome, Wayne. Good to hear. So I will tell you why I think, before we get to the rest of these answers, why I think the question is way more spicy for everybody. That's why I'm not getting very many good spicy responses to this. And plenty of men are admitting, yes, I need a woman, is because of this. When you, when you ask the question, does a man need a woman, it's not that exciting because you're like, yeah. He wouldn't even be here without her. He wouldn't exist. And then you ask, does a woman need a man? They're like, hell no. That's the answers that I get over and over. Hell no. There's just this huge defense up. There's, there's mul a multitude of different, if you guys saw last episode, uh, of different responses. But here you go. The reason why is, that what's interesting is, if you ask, does a woman need a man? They say, hell no. Well, aren't we just as equally important at having, ba like, so everybody could say, every human came from a woman. Uh, that's actually not true. Every human came from a man and a, every single human came from a man and a woman. Never has there been any other way. That's it. That's how it works, right? So if you look at it that way, you could say, okay, well, every human was birthed by a woman. Sure. Absolutely. Super important and absolutely significant. Very significant. Incredibly beautiful and significant. And glad I'm not a woman, so I don't have to go through it. But uh, hooray to you who have. Thank you, mother. So if you understand from the point of view of it being necessary for both a man and a woman to conceive a child, instead of taking the man out, which we become so disposable in today's modern world because things have been built so rad, that it's easy for women to become delusional and uh, get mad that, let's say, uh, they get compared to men, right, in today's modern world. So my point is, when you compare a woman to a man and a man to a woman, there's really one of those, there's no game to play. So here's, here's what I mean. When you compare a woman to a man, there's, let's say, a game to play. So, for example, if you were to say, uh, let's take a woman's soccer team. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last time. Let's take the women's U.S. soccer team. And let's take high school boys, all right, American high school boys. And let's do a tournament to see if they even stand a chance against elite women soccer players. And what do you think the outcome is? This is just reality, right? It's not my feelings. If you get hurt about this, you're just kind of a pussy and you're just a complete pussy. And that's okay. Uh, that's how you find out and you can reorient later. Uh, once the show's over, you can figure out your, your you know, nuts and bolts. So <clears throat> that was actually, should have been a pun. That would have been good. So if you think about the women's soccer team and a high school boys soccer team, so a woman's elite U.S. soccer team, Olympic team, and you have a men's high school team, they actually can compete, and the boys usually win. Actually, in any of these events where they've physically done this, uh, the boys destroy the girls, right? High school boys destroy adult professional players. So if you reverse this, there's no game to play because there's, there's just nothing. that This is why it doesn't happen, and this is why I think the question isn't spicy if you ask do men need women. It's not spicy, and here's why. Because if you take men soccer players... Not, you don't have to take a leap, but let's just take, let's just, for fair comparison, let's just take the men's U.S. soccer team. And let's play them against high school girl soccer teams. Do you think those girls have a chance? Honestly, you guys let me know. Do you really think, maybe you already know the answers because you have uh, looked this data up before or seen any of these competitions. I think it should be clear, but for some of you that are living in la-la land, 
what do you think that the outcome will be if you have the men's U.S. soccer team playing high school girls? What do you think is going to happen to the high school girls? What do you, this is, do you think this is going to look like adults playing with babies on a field, right? Or do you think this is going to look like opposing teams battling it out and hashing it out and seeing who's going to win neck and neck? What do you guys think? What do you think it'll turn out to be? So I think based off this answer is why the question is not so interesting when it comes from the men's point of view. Everybody says, oh, everybody needs a woman and every." but he's born from a woman and I agree and it's awesome, but uh, just as important as a man. So it's just weird to have these conversations for this reason. The reason we're talking about it now is because I think it's fun. I really do. I think biologically uh, and let's say philosophically, I I just think it's interesting that we live in a time where today we have these questions and it comes up a lot. So we'll get to the rest of the the responses actually that I got online here in a second. Chrissy said, that's trauma talking, Josh. Uh, I don't know what that means or what you're referring to. Uh, Brody says, women try to make men feel like they are not important. So again, think about this. Because if you look at it through this lens, you will understand most of the dialogue, especially publicly or uh, digitally on the social webs. You'll understand the dialogue, okay? Look, think about this. If there is no game to play, if there's men, if there's grown men in the U.S. soccer team playing high school girls, there's no game. There's just no game, right? Christy says, no chance. Don't look it up. It's obvi. Uh, Christy, not to everybody, but you can look it up. Uh, you will never find grown men playing high school girls because they would, there would be no game to play. It would just be, uh, there's, it's not a thing. It's not going to be a thing. Okay, at men's elite levels, you're just not going to see, you know, uh, women, especially in high school, being able to play against them. And then what I'm saying is take it to the other extreme. You have women's U.S. soccer team and uh, high school boys can absolutely spank them. And I don't mean that literally. So Christy says no chance. Don't look it up. It's obvious. And uh, I hope it is for most people. But there are people who disagree and they say maybe it's because of this or they give them unfair advantages or whatever. <laughs> who knows? No, they're, the guys are bigger. So, of course, they're going to be better. Well, OK, then my question lays to rest. Right. So <clears throat> when. Brody says, women try to make men feel like they're not important. I think that's because it's the only game to play, to be honest with you. I think it is. I think, I don't think there's a game to play the opposite way. Men trying to make women feel not important. It's just not a game to play. We don't need to compare ourselves to you, right? Performance wise, men are already elite. We don't need to compare ourselves to women. So there's no game to play for us there, right? So, matter of fact, when guys do do this, it actually is very embarrassing because they're like, I'm just like a woman. I'm in touch with my sensitive side. I like to do this. And I eat ice cream and talk to my buddies about our breakups and cry on the couch and hold our stuffed animals until the wee hours of the night talking about our star signs. Yeah, I'm not the only one who just threw up while I said that. What I'm saying is uh, that that's embarrassing, right, for a man to go down to that sort of uh, behavior. But for a woman to, uh, you know, pick up her britches and go to work and provide and protect for her family, she's now stepping up and making up for the loss of the man that is most likely not in her life, or at least not the real man that would be in her life. So she has to do the grunt work or the hard work or the provider protector work, the masculine work to make up for the sissy lalas that are around her, if any at all. And so what I'm saying is there's a game to play there for her to step up and she can get a pat on the back for doing so. Men are already men. So there's really nowhere to step up other than just be your most optimal self and you get zero pat on the back for it. Almost zero. Trust me, being a man, you get almost zero uh, rewards for that. Nobody's here patting you on the back, and you're not living a delusional life. It's pretty obvious that uh, you're, you're dispensable to, to a large degree. Historically, that's been proven to be true. <clears throat> uh, Danbury does agree. She says, no, they have zero chance. 100% true. Uh, she also says men will always win over women, at least when it comes to physical performance. That will definitely be true, or physical output, you could say. <clears throat> Uh, Brody said life wouldn't be fun without one another. Uh, Again, uh, that's like saying if you could go back in time, but you can't. Uh, Men can't exist without women and women can't exist without men. So it's, again, kind of funny to to have this sort of conversation. Christy says when ladies say they don't need men, it's most likely trauma. I see what you're saying. So when ladies say they don't need men, I think really what it is, again, is that women, women aren't the provider and protectors naturally. Although when men fail, because they have in our country, they've been destroyed. 
uh, mentally and emotionally and spiritually and financially. They're being attacked because the government doesn't like men to stand up against them because they know that uh, a fortified man who uh, believes in the God above and uh, teaches that to his family as well as works hard and, and builds, uh, let's say, <coughs> builds his own empire is a force to be reckoned with. They don't want that. So they get rid of the man. As they've abolished the man over the last couple hundred years, actually, it's been more than just the last 50, 60, what some people think, it's been in the making for a while. As they've been doing this, women have to make up for the loss of men because men are becoming sissified. Now that women are making up for the loss of men, they're now comparing themselves to men because men have been brought down in terms of performance and women are being encouraged and brought up in terms of performance. Well, with that being said, we don't get along so well. We become polarized. We're not so interested. We reduce our, each other down to our geniatelias, right? Because that's all we need from each other. Matter of fact, now we make robot penis. Robot, robot, robot peens. Let's say it that way. So we now make motorized peens for the women. And I think that, uh, you know, and I'm sure now it's coming out that they're doing the same thing for men. We've reduced each other down to that, right? That, that's what's happening, right? The number one reason why we've done this is because the world has already been built by men and on their backs. Things are figured out. The grid is here. And now we've built the digital grid. It's all pretty fucking stable. And it's easy to think now that we don't need each other, especially on the lower end of performance, which is the women's performance, which already went over. So don't get your panties in the wad. If you do, just keep it aside, put some jeans on and get to work. So if you think about the performance issue of it, now we're in a position where women are at work, right? We have double the taxpayers. And men are sort of at work too. I mean, we are. We still make up the majority of the workforce and the majority of GDP and output. Uh, and the the daily grind is still mostly male. What I'm saying is, do we, in, in regards to this question, do men need women? Well, the answer is yes, just like women need men. But the nuance is that, that we, we went over a list last week, right, where it was the top of the list of most jobs occupied by men and the bottom of the list, most jobs occupied by women. As you went down, the higher percentage of women occupied jobs and the less men occupied those jobs. So it went anywhere from construction workers, builders, and infrastructure, all almost completely men. You could just say men is 98.9%. And then all the way at the bottom, psychologists, daycare providers, and caregivers, women. Which one of these do you need to actually survive or live, right? If you were out in the woods, what do you need? Food, shelter, right? And water. You need that immediately. Food, shelter, water. And once that gets stabilized, over the next couple of years, things go well, and it gets so stable and so good that uh, you can start talking about your feelings, right? Things. Now it's warm inside. You got some light switches and some fireplaces, some food and a pantry. You could stay in for the winter, right? If you screw up a little bit on some of your food, it's okay. You're not going to die. You pickled some, you know, pickled some shit in the fucking pantry. And uh, now we can say, oh, I don't need a man. I don't need a man to last the winter. Well, that's easy to say now. That's really easy to say. So that's my point. That's, that's, that's what I'm drawing here. So if you were to ask, does a man need a woman? Of course, just like a moment he's a man. But there's a reason why when we go to war, we send the women off and we keep the men because that's who we need. There's a reason why that if shit hits the fan and needs to get done or built or repaired, we send mostly men to go do this. There's definitely reasons why that if we're going to go conquer something, we don't send a bunch of women. We, spend, we send a bunch of men to go do this. So... Imagine this is the sort of thought experiment that I've had in my head. To, well, actually, before I explain the thought experiment of the island, I've thought about before to demonstrate this very clearly. Uh, let me go ahead and read some of your guys' comments before I get too far. <clears throat> Brody says, logic versus emotions. That's definitely the difference between men and women is uh, women filter reality through emotions before logic, and then men go through logic before emotions. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Dambria, I actually agree with that probably more than anything else you've ever said. <laughs> Looks like Christy does too. Sorry for the sniffling, folks. And of course. America, fuck yeah! uh, here we go. Dambria says, do men get tired of having so much responsibility of leading a family? Never. We, a real man, a, a, a good, well-rounded man does not throw in the towel. He, he never throws in the towel. That's just not a thing. He doesn't come home one day and throw in the towel after seven years of providing and protecting and go, 
I've done my, when's it my turn? That's just not a thing. And, and by the way, if, if that is happening to you, I shouldn't say it's not a thing. It's not a thing if you're a man. Uh, but if you're a sissy, if you're, if you're a pussy, then, uh, and you may do this, right? I'm not saying I haven't heard of men doing this. Uh, I have. I should say males doing this. You are not a grown-ass man if you're throwing in the towel. So uh, men actually, I'll speak for myself here. When you say, do men get tired of having so much responsibility of leading the family? No, it's an honor. It's a complete honor. Not at all. It's, it's like, do you get tired of breathing? Do you get tired of waking up and... <coughs> do you get tired of waking up and taking care of yourself? You're like, oh, to get up again and you know, start another day. It's like, well, no, <laughs> shouldn't ask this. Maybe some of you absolutely hate your life. And sorry for those maybe suicidal thoughts, but uh, get some help. There's a, there's a whole call center for that. Uh, Christy says, good question. So do men get tired of having so much responsibility, men? If you're watching this, there's 15 of us on right now, which means I should have way more thumbs up, uh, little emojis given. So let's do that now in the comment section. Send me some of those, some of that love. Give me some hearts. Give me some flags. Give me what you can. Let's show this channel some love. Like, that's how you do it. Not just in the comment section, but y'all watching. What's up? Say something. Send something. So for you men that are out there watching, whether it's current or later on in this episode previously being recorded, then you guys go ahead and let me know what you think. Have you ever found a time where you got you got tired of the responsibility? I'm not saying it became a it became hard, or that you failed, or that it, you struggled. I'm saying, have you ever gotten to the point where you're like, I don't want to be the man who's responsible for leading this family anymore? Uh, just out of curiosity, because maybe there are some of you out there that are willing to admit to such a travesty. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, I would like to hope that it's a hard F no for most of you. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys the island uh, scenario before I get to the rest of these other questions. Here you go. So if you think, <clears throat> if you think about an island, right? Let's say two separate islands of equal size and resources. Two separate islands, right, in the middle of nowhere. And on one island, you have nine women and one man, 10 people total. Nine women, one man. You have another island of nine men and one woman. Which island do you think is going to succeed the most? Island number one with mostly women and one man or island number two with mostly men and one woman? Which one is going to survive? Let's say, uh, how about I say this? Which one is going to survive long term to assure the survival of their race? Meaning the world, these are the last people on earth. They have to survive for the next thousand years. And you want to assure it. Which one is, what do you think the outcome would be? If it was, just, just think about this. Island number one, nine, nine women, one man. Island number two, like how I started with that island, because <laughs> number one, that's my island. And number two, you have nine, nine men with one woman. Which island, out of, what do you guys think? You let me know which island is going to assure the human race succeeds and lives on. Truthfully. Let me know, because uh, it might be shocking, my answer to you, so we'll get to that in a second, and then my response to it might be even just as equally shocking, uh, because of why I think this to be true. So island number one with mostly women, and island number two with mostly men. You guys let me know. I, wa I want to hear from you, and we'll talk about that for a second. <clears throat> Wayne says, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there's going to be times where your hands are bleeding and you're, you're, you're done, right? You're like you literally are crawling on your hands and knees and bloody knuckled. <clears throat> and he, then he says, but that's what a man does. Yep, I saw your correction. That's what a man does, 100%. It should be exhausting, and it's rewarding. Incredibly, it's like backpacking, right, and getting to the top of the mountain. It's, I've never been more exhausted in my life, but super rewarding, right? <clears throat> Okay, so Wayne says, nine women, one man. That's uh, what assures our survival as a race. Uh, Brody Jade says, number two, with mostly men and one woman. Oops, answer before you finished. <laughs> there we go. So maybe she changes her mind. Uh, what's up, Barkas? Thanks for being on here. And get into the chat. Enjoy. And let's get some input going. More women, more babies. Lucky man, Christy says. Dambria says, the one man to nine women for repopulation purposes. Okay, so I don't think any of us are going to disagree at all with the fact that if we're trying to survive as a human race, 
we would absolutely need mostly women at first, right? A hundred percent. If you had nine men and one woman and that woman gets sick and dies during pregnancy, which is the number one cause of death for women historically, the number one cause of women of death in women is childbirth. So what do you, what, what would you bet on, right? You can't bet on the nine men, one woman. You, you can't, you couldn't bet on it. And then she has a baby. And what if that baby doesn't make it? She has to have another one. That's going to take another couple of years while the other islands off to the race and making a whole new race, literally, of people pretty quickly. Now, we don't have to get into the details and how Adam and Eve were probably ancestral and all that stuff. We can leave the details out for now because we're just talking about reality. I'm not going to uh, get too far there. I just am trying to display the difference between the value of like a couple hundred eggs that a woman has and the millions of spermi that the, the tens of millions, 250 million each uh, episode. <laughs> I'm going to call it an episode. There's my trauma coming out. So you can see that ours, we really, as men, represent, <coughs> we represent, let's say, uh, what's, the, what's the word? Not diversity. I don't want to say that. We represent disposability. If that's, I don't even know if that's a word. We, we represent our, our, able, our ability to be disposed of. <laughs> so we are very highly disposable compared to a, what a woman offers. She's not as disposable, which is why the island with nine men and one woman is probably not very successful. And the other island, number one, my island, that island's probably going to be just fine real quick, right? As long as nothing happens to the man. And they're all fighting for that one man, by the way. What a lucky dude. Whereas if you have nine dudes and one woman, <laughs> have all the dudes fighting for one woman. This is not going to be good. At, you're not going to have nine people, on, nine men on that island very long. So you see how this works. Now, this is an extreme only because I think that what happens is this just points out that biologically men are disposable and biologically women are, are very, very uh, precious in nature, right? The female is very precious. And that seems to be today um, very, very clear because men have done so well in building this infrastructure that we all enjoy so much and are still uh, fighting hard to build it and to maintain it. There's plenty of slavery on the backs of men who are, you know, literally enslaved by big corporations to keep our phones working and to keep our oil drilled and to keep things functioning, whether we like it or not. It's it's definitely not uh, all, um, you know, rainbows and sh sunshine. And uh, our grid is still working, right? Your AC is on. Your fuel is at the gas station already. And what I'm saying is it's easy for us now to just take that and say, okay, cool. Whatever, who cares? Just men go back to work and shut up and we don't need you anymore. And that's the, that, why wouldn't we act that way today, right? We've done so well as men, so well. And, and yes, Wayne, Wayne, I'm definitely not talking about Caltrans. Caltrans might as well just be exactly what it sounds like because uh, we're not talking about infrastructure anymore. We're now talking about sucking off the teat of infrastructure because those guys are pretty freaking useless. So what I'm saying is this, the world's done. The world's done. It's really been built well. I mean, we've gone to the fucking moon. We've done heart transplants. We've innovated and done some incredible things, right? Wars have been fought and died. men have died on battlefields for millennia in the most brutal ways we can't imagine swords going through your intestines. And the majority of men on, that are, you know, the majority of people are homeless men. The majority of people in prisons, men. The majority of suicides, men. The majority of depression and loneliness, men. The majority of virgins, men. The majority of people who die, virgins, men. Whatever. You say what you want. I'm just pointing out the facts. Okay? Look it up. Rewind that. Look it up all you want. My point is this. <clears throat> Nature says that we're disposable and that women are not. Men have done so well, even while being disposable, to serve the world so good. I'm not saying it perfectly, and I'm not saying without flaw at all. I would never say that. But so, we've done so good that it's easy to spit in the face of them now. And that's where we're at. And that's why it's not so visceral for the question to be asked, do men need women? It's just not that exciting. It's not that exciting because we're disposable and who cares, right? It's not a game to play. If you have grown-ass men playing soccer against high school girls, uh, there's no game to play. They'll, they'll get destroyed. Literally, there's no game to play. They'll stand around itching their armpits. I don't know. Maybe they have hairy armpits if they're women's soccer players. Is that a thing? So there, there's just no game to play. Right? If men's performance is here physically and women's output and performance is here physically, then there's nothing for men to compare themselves to. Right? It would just be the opposite way, and everybody, rightfully so, uh, you know, frowns upon that. 
men don't compare themselves to women. As soon as they start to do that, it's very awkward. and Nobody really likes it. And it's very embarrassing. For us real men, we look at you and think, ah, dude, let your balls drop. But for women to have to make up for the loss of these cisified men today, today's modern world, they have to make up for it. So they have to rise up and adapt. And they do. And they have. And hurrah for you. But in the meantime, it's created a delusion that makes women think they don't need men. And we no longer get along. At least we're definitely not having the babies. We're not having the relationships. We're not having the marriages. And uh, we're definitely not doing anything other than seemingly reducing ourselves down to our genitalia. And I can prove it. That's not my opinion. When I asked, do women need men? They say, hell no, except for maybe sex. That's what they say. But when I ask men, do they need women? I, haven't ha- I, would, I, I would bet you I don't have a single dude saying, hell no, unless it's just for sex. That, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's just, uh, we, this is not the game we're playing, right? We're not trying to compare ourselves to you guys. Because that's, that would be the wrong d- direction in terms of our performance. Yes, hairy armpits. Not the worst thing in the world. I know of worse. Brody says, women are emotional creatures and would start picking each other off. They turn on one another. There you go. Yes, we are a pre- precious princess. Interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to read some of the questions, and then I will hopefully not forget to get to uh, kind of the culmination of why I think this is all true and what's happening in regards to men being disposable and women being precious, but then also uh, why on an island number one and island number two we would succeed uh, more likely with island number one. But then the game, and we'll hopefully get to this before I, before I forget, um, then we'll talk about the game to play if you left nine men on an island and nine women. Here's a cool turn of events. If nine men were left on an island and nine women were left on another island, what do you think the outcome would look like there? So give me, your, give me your input while I get into some of these questions. But there was two separate islands. Now, island A and island B. Island A is full of men and island B is full of women. Okay? Which one do you think is going to survive and thrive? Which one's going to last? What, what do you think it's going to look like really quickly? Right? Let's just say to assure the existence of the human race, we could take that off the table because we can't reproduce. Let's just say a full life. So we, we're going to cap it out at... You know, that life expectancy of 80, um, 80 years old. <coughs> Do you think group A or group B makes it? Group A, did I say that was women or men? I should have said it. I don't actually remember. Group A, let's just, if I didn't fuck it up. Group A is men. Group B is women. Which island is going to succeed to the life expectancy? Most likely, or at least one of them. You guys let me know, A or B, the men or the women. I would love to know what you think. <coughs> I think it should be pretty obvious. Okay, some of the questions here. So the question I did ask, obviously, tonight was, does a man need a woman? And the last one on Instagram was, nope, just like women don't need men. We all need love. Well, that doesn't make sense at all. Nope, just like women don't need men. So this person is saying that women, that men don't need women, just like women don't need men. We all need love. So love can come from same or opposite sex or children or family or all kinds of people. Right? We can experience love, uh, but we cannot reproduce. So good luck existing uh, with just love. Uh, and by the way, you don't, if you didn't know, you don't actually need love to reproduce, although it's very beneficial, probably for good reason. So that's a weird answer because do men need women? And the answer that this person gives is, nope, just like women don't need men. We all need love. Very, very interesting. <clears throat> so again, it's uh, completely incorrect, literally, not just philosophically, because uh, we do need each other. We, it takes two to tango, and no woman has ever given birth to a baby that wasn't also participated by the sperm donor, to say the least, right? So <clears throat> it, it's just never happened any other way. I'm not talking about in the hospital anyway, because it's still the same thing. You still have to get this, this material from a man and from a woman. So good luck finding any other way. God forbid we ever find a place like that. <clears throat> Brody says, men would find a way to the women. If women had to do it alone, they wouldn't last as long as men. Kim, what's up? Thanks for being on here. Good to see you. Let's see. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. I missed a few things. Uh, So Danbury is quoting something there uh, that I've heard many a time. The hard thing about that quote that I don't actually like is that it's It doesn't talk about context, nor does it talk about seasons. It uh, kind of just assumes a broad, it seems like it assumes a broad stroke of, you know, 
hard times creating strong men, strong men creating good times, good times creating weak men. The problem is with that is we're not always all around in the world or in your community or in your country at, in hard times, right? It's ebbing and flowing all over the place at different points and for, at different uh, intensities. So that's, and, and maybe within your home, that's true, but within, you know, the majority of American homes around you, it's not at the time, depending on who you are. <coughs> like today, most people are most likely, you know, in this country to be born without a father in the home, whereas in the past, you were most likely, whether you were black, white, or Asian, or Mexican, you were most likely to be born in a home with a father. So uh, is that good? Is it bad? Well, some people, if you're one of these feminazis today, you would say that's probably bad and better without them. Don't need them, right? So it's always ironic. Okay. <clears throat> Ryan says A. Okay. Heidi says A. So these are the people. The men would last. Men would survive longer. They are hunters and shelter builders. Okay. Uh, Wayne says the men, depending on the cohability of the men, cooperation amongst the group, uh, they'll do well if it turns into a big dick contest. Who knows? Uh, you're exactly right. Who knows? But what happens to the women pretty quickly? Out of curiosity, what do you think, Wayne? Men build boats, go get chicks. <laughs> That's probably exactly what we would do as soon as we built a little village. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Curtis says men just need badass cars. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, Kim says 100% we need each other. You're right. So we talked about the island uh, one and two earlier where you had 10 people total on each island, totally isolated from itself. We wanted to assure the human race. And one island had nine women and one man. And the other island had nine men and one woman. Which one is most likely to assure the human race lives on? It's obviously not the one with nine men and one woman. That's probably not going to end well for many reasons. It's most likely the island with one man and nine women. So you could think about how this would play out, right, just in terms of the literal genetic possibilities. What's interesting, though, is what happens when you have an island where it's only men and an island that's only women, which one's going to live the fullest lives? I think women die really quickly, honestly. I think they get sick and they die really, really fast. I don't think uh, there's many people who are going to contest that, although there are some delusional people that will. I think what's interesting is the men will figure it out pretty quickly and they will have what it takes to thrive. They will have what it takes to build because that's what we do. And we talked about this last time in the, in the, um, the uh, career choices men and women make for a reason, not because of societal pressure, but because of our biological and different differences, which is men build infrastructure. And once it's all done, just like when we go to battle, just like when we conquer a land, just like when we go and clear out an area or do something major or construction or a site or a blueprint, doesn't matter. Men do that. And then once it's done and the hard work is there and the sweat of the brow is done and it's all finished, women come in and make it a lot better. We do the hard grunt work, which is dispensable and disposable because you need a lot of us and you need a ton of us and we can all pretty much do it because muscle's dispensable, so it's labor, i.e. the military. And when it comes to women, they're not dispensable, right? Just like they're eggs and they don't have as many as we do in terms of spermi. And so even just in those numbers alone, it shows how precious they are in that regard. So we do all this work with the sweat of our brow to build this infrastructure, and once that's done, women come in and make it a little bit better, and that's true. With that being said, do men need women? Well, we sure do if we want to literally exist just like women need men, but if we want to play this game at all, if there is a game to play, let's take out, let's take out the survival of the human race for a minute and ask, do men need women and women need men? If it was just a survival game, um, I really think it's pretty freaking obvious. Men go into territories to conquer, and they go into wild lands and adventurous places for a reason, because they can survive there. Women do not go and do this at large, because if they did on a regular basis, unless it's a sustained, unless it's somewhat civil, which means it's already a structure, it's already an empire built on the brows and the backs of men. So with these men explorers, and entrepreneurs, and inventors, and conquerors, then women can come in uh, and make something better of it, which is really awesome. It makes us actually really like doing it, and it gives us quite a bit of pride. It's like a man providing and protecting his family. We fucking love doing it, and it, it's just the, it's the natural way of things. I know this is some really obvious stuff to some of you watching it, especially if you're my age or older, um, but this is seemingly so very controversial today, which is so weird and so bizarre and so perverted in today's modern world. This is just so weird. 
to me. Um, but yeah, so there we go. I think <clears throat> things are built by men and women make them just that much better. So do we need women? 100%, just like women need men, no doubt. But if you just take out literal existence, survivability, and birth out of it, because you need both of us for, for that, if you were to just take all of it out and say women on their own, men on their own, women, men can't use anything women make, and men, women can't use anything men make, women would be gone pretty quickly. You, you would be really uncomfortable and be begging back into our bosoms in no time. Where vice versa would probably be true, too, why men keep their pictures of their wives and family in their helmets while at war is for good reason to keep us going. So we can play this hypothetical game that doesn't necessarily exist unless it's in extreme situations like war, right? Do women need men in war? Yeah, they sure do. So that women can bounce and the men can fight and die. Uh, and I don't mean that with any disrespect. It's a sad truth. It's just reality is what it is. And do women need men if uh, shit falls apart and needs to be rebuilt? 100%. Not going to get built very fast or efficient if it's just women doing it, if it's going to be built at all. I don't really know very many women br bricklayers, that's for sure. Never met one myself. <clears throat> They're definitely not the majority. Okay. Off topic, but Christy says. Don't know what that means. <clears throat> Let's see. Again, it depends on the makeup of the group. Women can do well or fail miserably. Yeah, you, you could be right on extreme ends, but I'm just talking generally speaking, Lane, in terms of like women and men being on an island. I say average women, average men. I really, truly do think, of course, there's nuances to it, but let's just say the average or the basic person. Um, <clears throat> Miranda, Miranda, women live forever, then we haunt you. What the heck? That's, a weird, that's weird to say. I don't know why you would say that. You must be a Cancer or a Libra. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, Wayne says, done well alone. Felt better with a woman. Gives me the focus and drive to succeed. And I totally agree. That's the whole point, right? Like, if you were to tell a man, like, he has to be at war, but uh, wouldn't it be nicer if you could have your girl and your, and your family with you every once in a while and see them and meet them and, and, and inter interact with them? He would say yes. No doubt. It'd be better. But does he need her there to be able to do his job? No. Absolutely not. <clears throat> okay, so Danbury, so you're saying, so it... So is it better for a woman to give tough love or baby our partners when they fuck up? Uh, that's no, I don't think that that's a woman's job to do at all. But if you're doing that, then you have a girlfriend. You don't have a boyfriend. You have a wife. You don't have a husband. If you have to baby him or show him tough love to train him, then you're the mother of the situation and he's the son. And what you're probably wanting or looking for is to be the the daughter of the relationship and a father position in terms of dynamics with the man, right? Somebody who can lead you and protect you and provide for you. And that's why you are having to baby the son from the mother's position. Uh, it's a very uh, backwards way of, of living and people get frustrated by it all the time. Uh, Wendy says, men cannot function without a woman. That is a fact. That's so interesting people say that because uh, what do you think war is? Like, what do you think when a man goes into a territory and destroys something so he can rebuild it or save it or, you know, whether it's putting out a fire or reconstructing something or building something from nothing or traveling the seas? What, what, do, you, do you think there was a bunch of women with him when people came from overseas to the Americas and discovered a new land from the, from the modern world and we got here to the Americas? Do you think they sent a bunch of women right away? Do you think they brought women right away? I think it was hundreds of years from the first explorers reaching here from the European countries that they, before they brought women. So uh, to not function without a woman, you might be right, Wendy, that uh, that might be true today with modern men. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the goal, right, is to make them pussies so they're not a force to be reckoned with so the government can pretty much just have their way with our families, uh, get the schools to raise them to be little retards, and um, there we go, full control. Push any agenda they want because who's going to stand up to them? Right? We have a bunch of sissy men. So for women out there that think that men can't function without a woman, that's a fact. Uh, I don't. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I see where you think that that's true. But don't get it confused and don't let our boys slip through the cracks thinking that that's some sort of narrative that is <coughs> default. It's not the default male, okay? That has been mo America's modern-day trained male, and it's subpar, right? Our optimal self as men is to be able to function very well without women so that we can build the infrastructure, and once it's done, by the simple sweat of our brow, women can come in and make it just that much better, worth dying for, coming back and trying again. That's what happens. So men can absolutely function without a woman. 
But you're right if you're talking about modern men, plenty of them are not doing well because they have been demoralized. Their masculinity has been stripped from them at birth, and they've been done nothing but talked down to at the beginning. And then as they grow older and they are subpar, we then just spit in their face and talk to them about how inconvenient they are for our dating lives and point out how they are so insignificant in the bedroom. And what's very interesting about that is how dare we do that to our men today who have been taught at birth, by, by birth and upwards of five, six years old in school even, to as soon as he defends himself or somebody around him, bad, bad little Johnny. As soon as he makes a little bit of income or a little bit of money and he gets taxed up the ass, not saying this doesn't happen to women too, but now that women are in the workforce just as much as men, they make up almost exactly half the workforce now. Uh, that's true for women too, but for a man, the difference is we want to provide for our families and give them all that we have. Whereas when a woman starts to out-earn a man, she typically leaves her man. And if he doesn't out-earn her or step up and do it himself, she typically leaves him. Number one causes of divorce typically would be when a man starts to be out-earned by his spouse, by his significant other, his female. <clears throat> so there's, there's my two cents on that. Uh, okay, should, Danbury says, should women give it to men straight or protect their feelings? I, don't, I think a woman should, of course, protect her family and care about them. I don't think that they should be harmful or hurtful, just like the men shouldn't either. Uh, but you have to be honest and truthful, right? Should women give it s men straight or protect their feelings? Um, I think if you care about somebody, you're going to be very straight with them, 100%. That doesn't mean you have to attack them or hurt them. Uh, Wayne says, nope, we need to be held accountable. I'm not sure what that's in response to. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Man gives you peace. So Brody's saying a man gives you peace. You are le led. Lead. Don't have to think and submit. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Reading it wrong. Um, Tambria, you are hilarious. Okay, I'm just trying to read the comments before I get to the rest of these questions here. Uh, Dambria says, can us women train them to become the men we want? Yeah, and you have. We have taught men at the earliest of ages to sit and listen to women as their superiors for the first 18 years of our lives next to other women, 50-50 in the classroom, uh, who fare well to sit and listen while we do not because we're men. And then we judge said men off of their ability to act like women. And when they don't do so well, bad boy. Imagine the kind of men you're going to get in 18 years. You've taught them to sit and listen to women as their superior for 18 years. And then when you get a man, you want him to act like some sort of provider protector and not need these, like you're saying, uh, trained ways, these, these harsh words that are going to turn him into the kind of man you want, which won't happen. What will happen is that he will need a mother and you will mother him. And uh, that's just the way it works, right? Now we have the mother-son dynamic instead of the father-daughter dynamic. And one of them is much better th than the other for everybody. <clears throat> Brody Jade says, train, they aren't animals. Well, we are animals uh, biologically, and we are trainable. All of us are. And unfortunately, we have been trained to sit and listen to women as our authority for the last 18 years, first 18 years of our lives, next to women who also thrive well. They don't necessarily like it, but do well in that said scenario because they do sit and listen and follow, which is what school is. And then women say, we're not good at listening and following, but men are. <laughs> then why are you doing so good in school compared to men? Right? Look at the college dropout rates, high school dropout rates. Look at the college graduation rates. Look at the, uh, the accolades that are getting handed out. I sat and it was absolutely brutal. And when I sat into the last graduation that I went to and watched how many, what, what the diversity between male and female was, what the split, the percentage of the split of male and females amongst the classes getting accolades, it was depressing. It really was. I noticed it right away and nobody cares because men, who cares? Dispensable. And then at the end, of course, once all the girls got their awards, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of them, a few guys here and there, but a bunch of girls, a bunch of women. At the very end, they mentioned the three men who uh, got, who got drafted and uh, not drafted, sorry, who, uh, who enlisted, <coughs> excuse me, the three boys who enlisted, they mentioned at the very end, gave them a little round of applause. Awesome. Very cool. So that was uh, very embarrassing and very telling of our school situation. So, yes, we can train men, we have, and it's not so good because now we sit, we listen, and we act like subordinates to the women, and we wait for them to tell us when to move because we want to be respectful, we don't want to be hurtful, we don't want to be rash, and we've been betatized and soft 
so that I, I know this sounds conspiratory to some of you because you're not on the same level, but here you go. It's so that the country can get away with whatever the fuck it wants, right? The U.S. government, can, the world government, really, the new world order can do whatever it wants because you have been absolutely betatized. Sit and listen to the women next to women while you are compared to them in terms of your performance because we don't really need you to be a big, bad, strong boy anymore. The world's already been built. We just need you to sit, listen, and get taxed to high hell <clears throat> so that all the elites can suck us both dry and our families fall apart so the schools can raise them. Welcome to the new world. Yes, we can be trained. <clears throat> Wayne says, we should be straight with our men. When, when should be, women should be straight with their men. We're not children. Uh, Let's see, I'm going through the comments here. So she's pointing out, Danbury is pointing out uh, that the difference between a father who, a boy who's been raised without a father and only a mother present. Yeah, uh, single motherhood is like one of the worst outcomes for uh, young boys in general, for kids uh, overall. That's one of the worst statistics. To It's true, right? That I've, I've, been, I've been over this before. If anybody has any other information they want to share with me, uh, all I've ever concluded to is this. And, and actually behavioral um, studies prove this. The worst, the worst predictive outcome, the number one predictor of the worst outcome of a child's life is single motherhood. The best predictor is two parenthood, right? Two parents in the home. Now, if you were to take single fatherhood, no mother, just father, and place him between the most optimal and the worst, which is most optimal, mom and dad, worst, just woman, just mom, where would just father, just father raising alone be? Where do you think it would land? Somewhere in the middle? Do you think it would be towards the same exact outcome as just mom raising them? Do you think it would be kind of like mom and dad both? Do you, where do you think that would land? Do you think it would be more towards mom and dad? Or do you think a single father would be the same sort of outcome as single mother? You guys let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you now. If I don't hear from you, I'm just going to kick you all off. So might as well, if you want to keep this going, it's only been one hour. Let's rock and roll. Uh, Heidi says, I don't think men need to be trained. We show our sons how to be great men. And that's true. Uh, men necessarily don't necessarily need to be trained. Uh, but yes, boys do. And that's the whole point. But I do not think that it's a woman's job to do so. I think it's a man's job, right? I think it's a very important thing for men. I mean, it's it's been proven that it's a very important thing. It's not what we think. It's what we know. And we know that uh, boys need men around as role models. And even women know this, right? Single women have told me many a time that... You know, they have a son and they're just worried about him because they don't really have a man in their life and that their brother's in and out of jail and their uncle's kind of a dickhead and, you know, grandpa's around here and there, but he's getting old. And women will absolutely say, like, what do I do? Like, I'm, I wish I had somebody in his life that I can count on. They know how important it is. Just They, they just know it. I think it's inherent that, that people know this. Uh, Wayne says, conformity factories, public schools. 100%. Sit and listen. Be a good little boy. And if you're not acting as good as a girl, then you have a problem. But yet it's set up to sit and listen. And we know we don't want those types of men, right? Do you women want the types of men for 18 years to be trained in their most, you know, in their most formal, formidable years? Do you really want them to be sat and listened to? That's not the right word. Do you really want them to sit and listen to a woman as their authority for 18 years and compared to the young girls next to them for 18 years in a, in a scenario that's set up for both of them to fail, but for men to completely drown? You really want those kind of men? Is that really what we want? Is that, the, is that the society we want to build? Some would say yes, and you are some sick MFers. Uh, and some of you realize that uh, life is real and shit happens, right? Around the world, we're seeing this right now. What kind of men are you going to think you're going to want if shit hits a fan? Right? You want those boys who did really good in school and sat and listened to their women and to the girls next to them? Do you? Do you really think that that's the men you're going to want, honestly? Yeah, well, that's the men you have now, and most of you recognize that there's some serious problems going around. Barca says, better than single motherhood. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Wayne says, I'm guessing towards mom and dad. So in relationship to a single father, is he more like a mother and father outcome, which is most optimal for a child? Or is he more like a single motherhood outcome, which is least optimal? It's literally the worst scenario. The worst case scenario for your kid is having no father in the home. So there you go. Uh, Wayne is saying he's guessing towards mom and dad. 
Danbury says, I know I'm failing my boy. I have no clue how to be a man, so I return. I can in return I can tell him how to be and what to be. Should be sorry, I'm reading that weird. This word is weird, but I can't show him. And showing these boys is very vital. You're 100 percent right. And w- like I said, women recognize it very early on. They know it, especially if they have sons and they love them dearly. They they know that this matters. <clears throat> Heidi says, "Yes, I agree. It's a man's job, no doubt." Interesting. Dan, I was just reading your comment there. So uh, if you guys are wondering, and some of you already chimed in, in regards to mom and dad in a household, single mother household, where does single fatherhood land in that spectrum of most optimal outcomes or least optimal outcomes for children? They're almost identical to a two-parent home. Think about that. Studies show, studies show, behavioral studies show that single fathers raise kids with a very similar, if not identical, outcome as a two-parent home, which is the most optimal thing for children. A single mother home, and this has nothing to do with saying women aren't good enough or that men are better. That has nothing to do with it, right? This has everything to do with what's best for kids, what's best for family. Now, am I saying all kids should be guarded or granted you know, blind parenthood to their fathers? No, just like I wouldn't say that to their mothers. But we, le- we tend to lean that way. In California, we do lean that way. We absolutely lend to the women. So my point is, if the government's trying to destroy us, take the man out, give the kids to the women. They know that. And then they set it up to make you think that you're the victim and you feel like entitled. Because if you feel entitled, now you will fight their battle for them in trying to take everything from the man, especially the children, and his money, <laughs> while getting taxed. So uh, you're just feeding the system and don't even realize it. You've become part of the, part of the problem. You've been absolutely you know, uh, abandoned by your own fortitude and completely sucked into the real actual machine that exists. <coughs> I say this often that uh, two ways you can economically fix this world would be uh, tax men at a flat, tax everybody in America at a flat 10% tax rate max. You can never, never pay more tax than 10%. And... No more child support and alimony ever again. You would fix family, marital, and relationship problems quickly, as much as some of you don't realize it, you would. You do not need the government or judges to tell you how to raise your families. You need accountability. And I think a lot of us don't have the accountability because you just don't realize how fucked up it is because you've been granted such ease and live in a delusional mind. So there you go. <clears throat> That's really cool. Eleanor, thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Sorry for the sniffling, guys and girls. Uh, Wendy, that's a lot for me to read, but I'll try to scan it for a second. Single mom here with two sons. We are grown and daughter graduating in a month. Both of my sons are very successful, blah, 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 Air Force. They have spread at PED. I have pushed them really hard. Will you be a man in the son's life is a good thing if you have it available for sure. Um, yes, so that's really good, Wendy, and thank you for sharing that, and good for you, because I do believe it's very possible uh, for wonderful humans, uh, some of the best men I know, some, <clears throat> how do I say that? There are some really good men in my life that I, that I cherish dearly, and they were raised by their mothers. And they're wonderful men. And they're great, they're great family men, um, incredible providers, protectors. They're, they're gentlemen, to say the least. Um, yeah, it's, it's very possible. I mean, look, uh, can a woman raise a decent man to succeed in life? Of course. Absolutely. Can a man do the same? Of course. Absolutely. But statistically, and overall, what I'm talking about is the large, the, the, the spectrum of where it falls in most optimal for the kid most of the time. So I'm not really here to say, like I've had a friend, for example, who was raised by a single mom and, and abandoned by her eventually. Won't say any names out of respect. But uh, he had brought up one time, he's like, what? So since I was raised by a single mom, I'm not a good man. I was like, dude, that, that's not at all what I've ever said. I've never heard I said that. But I could tell that by some of the language I have tonight and the topics that some people would think that's what I'm saying if they were in this scenario, whether they're a mother raising boys or a boy who was raised by a mother or a man who was raised by a single mother. I'm not saying that at all. Some of the greatest people I know were raised by single mothers, right? Does that prove that single motherhood is the most optimal or good for boys? No, it does not. It just means sometimes it can work out. Just like some of the smartest people you've ever met and were high school dropouts. Um, it also can say that uh, some of the richest people you've ever met are uh, were born poor. Some of the least successful people in life b- with a, no silver spoon uh, became the most successful. There's always anecdotal relationships between all this. There's always an outlier, right? There's always the, 
um, the ob- objection to the rule. There's always the, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, it's not coming to my mind. I'm a little slow tonight. I'm actually doing better than I thought for being sick. So this is pretty cool. And thank you folks for joining me. There's always an exception to the rule. There we go. <clears throat> but it cannot be the rule, right? And that's what we're talking about here. I'm not saying there are not, you know, um, like I was talking about earlier with the islands, you have island A and B. Does that mean that it's always true? Dude, if you had one psycho murderer on one of the islands, then none of not, that outcome's pretty much shot. If I'm speaking past you guys, you didn't hear the beginning of this episode. I, I apologize, but um, there's always exceptions to rules, right? That's just a real thing. Uh, but then there's always, of course, the rule. <laughs> okay, I'm getting down to the comment section again. Pushing them made me who they are. Um, <clears throat> oh, pushing them made them who they are. We don't learn without difficulties and adversity. Wayne, you're exactly right. Thank you so much for saying that. I'm going to give you, actually, let's see if I can find this. I'm super off on my sound effects, but I'm going to find it. Wayne, thank you for that. I hope that was loud and in your face because here's why. Pushing them made them who they are. We don't learn without difficulties and adversity. There is no learning, especially for us men. Zero learning without pressure, right? That's it. Without pressure, just like a diamond, pressure, temperature. You need pressure and high, high temperature for a diamond to be formed out of a resource that gets thrown away. A resource that if it touches you, coal, you, you, you're disgusted by it, right? You're, you're a poor man if you're working with it. Whereas you're a rich man if you are able to find the diamond within it. But high temperature and high pressure is the only way in which that's formed. That is what we're failing our boys today sitting and listening in classrooms designed for them to fail, padded so that they don't get the bumps and bruises, you know, flag or touch football at best. Um, If they stand up for themselves and get in a fight and, and subdue the bully, they're just as guilty and have to go home and punished. All I'm saying is the men we have today and the men we could have instead um, are in stark contrast. And I think we can do better, and I think it's time to start. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that, and that's probably why we're having these conversations, not because I just think it or you just think it, probably because a lot of people are thinking it. And the interwebs are putting its tentacles out there and its feelers and uh, letting us know to start paying attention. So, yeah, hope that helps. <clears throat> uh, Ryan says, I don't, really hear, I don't really hear single men raising their children getting child support but you hear a lot of either women are getting child support. Uh, the majority of child support and alimony, it's like 97% of it is paid out from men to women. Ryan, in case you were wondering, that's the statistics. Christy. America. Okay, here we go. Uh, Wayne's asking a question. He says, the question I have is, would a boy raised by a man who otherwise would have been, ba- who would have been, would have bailed, sorry, been raised as a good man? The que- <laughs> So, <laughs> now, Yes, you're talking about nuances now. So what I'm saying, and I'm not giving excuses to bad parenting, and I'm not giving excuses to to, you know bad fathers. But what you're maybe saying a little better is, would a bad man who would have who should have bailed or did bail on their kid, would the kid have been better off had he stayed? Typically, yes. As long as as long as there's no health risks, as long as there's no um, you know safety concerns, as long as this person is stable enough to just simply be the rock in the family. Doesn't necessarily have to be the most emotional. Doesn't have to sit and play Legos on the ground. Doesn't have to be super emotionally connected. Uh, I would say is much better than him not being there. Now, would a bad man be better off out of a child's life and let him be raised by a mother? Of course. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But that's where we get a little nuanced, right? Because that's not really what the statistics are pointing out as whether or not a good man or a bad man is raising boys. Now, what might be interesting to talk about sometime, but we wouldn't have time today because it would be a whole conversation is, is the type of men that we've raised and trained and conditioned today, the little beta children, is the kind of man we've born and bred today, the weaker men than the, in the past, which everybody agrees to, are those the kind of men we would want raising our children at large? I don't know. Maybe that's another question we can have at a different time. But let's keep going on here in the comment section. I'm going to try to keep up because you guys comment faster than I can read and respond to. Uh, what if a psycho murderer is the man? Well, then I think that that's obvious, right? So exceptions to rules. <clears throat> oh. 
So if you, uh, Dan, you're saying actually men do pay more than women, but also the women have the kids over the men generally too. Women have been granted the kids over the men generally too. Men do not get granted kids even if they ask for them and have no reason not to be. Happens all the time, and uh, I've been at the forefront of that battle many a times and seen plenty of people go through it. I am no f- no stranger to it. Uh, the the children are granted to the women. Let's just be real with that. And then uh, when it comes to child support and alimony, yes, it's mostly paid out from men to women. And because men typically out earn women, because we also outwork women hourly wise, then they also pay, even if it is a fifty fifty split. They end up paying. Uh, women get assistance and men just do it. Not sounding sexist, but that's how I see it. Ryan, you're not wrong. That that is how it works. <coughs> Brody says a man will break their back and bleed their last drop to provide for their kids. And I do agree. And so here's one of the problems is we've raised men to be boys. So by 18, they're not even worth a shit yet. And now they go out into the world and they start to have babies and kids and start families and start acting like men because they're at that age and should be. But they're not they're not fortified to be because they've been taught to sit and listen and be of zero. They have got zero blisters on their hands yet. Right? They've been padded. So what happens is then when they do have families, they're not even ready for it. They have zero skills to be able to provide and protect for them. They don't know anything about life at 18, which is a fucking travesty. So what I'm saying is, yes, a man will break their back and bleed their last drop to pot. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I knew that would happen to the mic. I apologize. A man will break their back and bleed for the last drop to provide for their kids. You're right. One thing we have to understand is men today, especially if you're having children at you know, in their early 20s, which is pretty typical, or somewhere in your 20s, what you have to understand is at that early age, that man doesn't get granted the custody, right? He doesn't have, he doesn't carry the baby for now. I'm not giving him excuses. I'm giving you guys only an explanation of today's uh, society and how it works in regards to this. These boys have a couple of years to screw up. They do. Your kid's not going to cost a whole lot yet. Uh, they're typically, I'm not saying they don't. Sometimes medical could be a big deal. Uh, and, and often it's very unfortunate that it does. But what I'm saying is your kid is pretty easy. He's not running around yet. He's not getting into things. He's pretty much laying there, and breast milk is pretty s- sufficient, right? Uh, and you've probably got a ton of diapers anyway, a year's supply. You, he'll probably grow out his diapers before you use them all for the first six months to a year. Let's be real. You're having a baby shower of some sort. So what I'm saying is uh, these men get attacked day one for not knowing what to do or stepping up. Give them a little bit of damn time. The most important thing in this child's life, I'm not giving them an excuse. I'm hoping that your children get the best outcome possible by letting him have the opportunity, however long it takes, to be a part of that kid's life in the most healthy way possible, whether you're with him or not, parent with him, instead of attacking him right away, as well as getting his balls kicked in while he gets child support and alimony taken immediately, right? Just taxed at the ass, if not garnished, right away, while you get granted custody, and I'm not complaining and saying, poor me, or I'm a victim, or any of these men are. What I'm saying is, think about your children if this scenario and what I'm saying to be true is that worst case scenario for your kid, single, single parent home, especially single parent raised by mother. Best case scenario, mother, father. Right? Give them a little bit of time. First six months, year, two years, instead of just cutthroating him right away, sl- slitting his throat in the night, and running on and saying he's a terrible father. He was never there. You made it such hell. Let's be real. Some of you girls know this. Not saying you on here have done this, but some of you girls know plenty of women who <clears throat> plenty of women who use their kids to hurt the men, right? This is real. And they get granted that. So they have that leverage, right? Given to them by our uh, powers that be. And it's real. And then it makes it to the point to where, unfortunately, these young boys who haven't yet even became men, who now have babies to provide and protect for, but don't, they pretty much just check right out. They're like, mm, video games and smoke weed, I'm out. That, that's what happens. We don't encourage the family. I'm not giving them excuses. What I'm doing is giving your kid, hopefully, the best fighting fucking chance of having the parents at least co-parent, minimum, bare minimum, right, for the kids. Screw the parents. I don't care about them and their video games or whatever the fuck they're doing, right, watching porn with Cheeto stained fingers in the beanbags. I don't care. What I do care about, though, is the outcome of these children, right? That's who I'm talking about. When I talk about men being demoralized and diminished today and attacked. I'm not talking about grown men being attacked now necessarily. I'm talking about from birth, right? The five-year-old boy who tried to protect himself in school and told he was bad for doing so or standing up for the kid who was getting picked on and now he's in trouble too. For the young boy who's 15, 16, graduates high school at 18 and still doesn't have blisters, still doesn't, he's never had a sunburnt back. He's never built anything by the sweat of his brow. 
And now at 18, he's just thrown out into the world and doesn't do so well because he's not much of a follower because he's male, right? And girls go, oh, women learn so much faster than men. Yeah, in scenarios where they sit and listen and get led by teachers, men learn a lot faster physically when they are taught by other men who have done the thing in which they're teaching and give them a damn fighting chance. That's all I'm saying. And I'm saying this because I'd rather have a better community than the ones we have today. We are living subpar. Men can be better. They have been better. And we know how to do it. And unfortunately, they know how to do it. And that's why they're doing it backwards is to keep us at bay. That's, what, that's what's happening. Okay, there's my rant for a moment. <clears throat> uh, so Kim says, uh, Brother Jade, there are a lot of women that will do the same for their children. And that's great. That's awesome. Uh, but you notice, Kim, how you have to say that when, uh, so what I was saying earlier, it's just a natural thing I see that people have a tendency for today, is you have to compare the men to the women. Or I'm sorry, the women to the men. Women always have to come in and say, but women can do it too. Women can do it too. But you never hear men say that. Never hear men say that. Because in terms of performance and outcome, men perform, outperform women at large. And, that's a, and if that's true, right, fuck your feelings, if that's true, what we want is more of that. If that's true, then what we want is that man to do more of that. We want to encourage it. Uh, and I think what I'm pointing out is that's why oftentimes women get paired, compared to men is because in terms of output, here's a man and here's a woman. We can see this in extreme ends of sports, right? None of us really disagree with that. At the extreme ends of sports, you see that the performance is here. At the extreme ends of uh, annual earnings, at the extreme ends of the infrastructure being built, whatever it is, in terms of performance, you have men, okay? And that's why women compare themselves to men. And anytime you talk about a man's performance, you have to compare a woman to it because women are making up for the loss and the lack of sissy la la men today. And that's why you have to respond in, in a way that's uh, what, defensive because today we do have weak men. And it just proves it every time I hear somebody say something like, uh, you know, men will bleed and die for their children. And then somebody else saying uh, that women will do that too. Yeah, we're not disagreeing. But if I say that about a woman, nobody comes back and says men will do that too. Nobody comes back and says that. It's just not a conversation because we just expect that. It's very interesting. <clears throat> uh, Debra says in California, maybe other states do grant fa uh, father's guardianship. There are a couple of states, not many. Not, there's very few. And California being the biggest population is not one of them. Mandy, what's up? Thanks for being on here. Good to see you. We've been on a rant for a little bit. It's now an hour and 30 minutes. We're going to wrap this up. Let's get to the rest of these comments that have came in, even though this is a good subject. <coughs> uh, this is a good subject, and I appreciate it, your guys' input uh, more than you know. So thank you very much. Let's see here. Uh, do donor. Oh, interesting. Thank you, Wayne, for sharing that. Married high school sweetheart together 33 years. This raised our sons together. Also parted ways. <coughs> Uh, Christy saying married her high school sweetheart together 33 ish years, raised our son together, also part of ways. Honestly, I think if you want to split up, do it after the kids are raised, they can handle it. I think if you do it when they're six, seven, eight, ten 10 years old, they don't know what's going on. And especially if the uh, father goes MIA, not so good. Wayne, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Kim says, again, there are so many women that want the family and want the man there, but end up with a man that runs the street to find the next bed to climb in. That's interesting you say that, too, because I don't know if you know this, but statistically, women actually cheat on their men far more than men do their women and have less remorse for it, uh, which is a weird thing to find. Um, I've definitely seen that firsthand, though. Uh, what part, Kim? Interesting. Uh, exactly, Kim. It's most. It's like most men are bred to have a harem of women, animal-like. That's interesting. So, again, uh, male behavior always gets demoralized. Women's behavior is always protected. Very interesting. Thanks for proving my point. Women also find the next bed to be in. <laughs> Ryan, thank you. <laughs> thank you because women have uh, far more sex than men and often cheat uh, far more than men. Just, just be clear. <clears throat> My son was 27. Christy, and good for you, and I hope he's doing really well. And for you single mothers out there as well uh, who've raised their sons, whether you're in it, for you mothers out there, good on you for being there for your family and doing your job. That is awesome. It's the greatest pr privilege you could ever have. And uh, we absolutely need you. For you men out there, including myself, who have children or don't have children, but maybe even have nieces, nephews, whatever, whatever the case for you is, whether you're the male or the female on this side, uh, good on you for being there for your family and for your kids and for all of them, even if it's your community, whatever, where it is, wherever it is that you're serving. 
Men and women are both needed. You're never going to have any of this without us. The scenarios on the islands are never going to be necessarily real, except for extreme scenarios like war, okay, and, and disaster, which, do, which is real. But we're never going to have an island where it's just men and just women, right? It's never going to come down to that. And if it does, it really doesn't matter because there's no game to play anyway. It's going to be over in a matter of time, no matter what. It's just to prove points on opposite sides. We fundamentally need each other. Again, going back to the biblical sense, there's one thing that when God made it, he did not say, there it is, and it is good. He said, there it is, and it's not done. I'm going, he needs a helper, right? Man, Adam was created, and God looked at him and said, hmm, needs something more, right? And it said that woman was made out of his rib to be his helper, right? Woman came from man to be his helper for a reason, right? And don't think of helper as slave, because again, I'll remind you, Jesus in the Bible was called the helper of man, right? God sent his son to help mankind, and that's God's spoken word. So just know that being a helper is not a negative thing. So tread on that word, you feminazis, lightly. <sighs> Parent well, right? Encourage family. Encourage family to no end. If somebody is not hurting you, if somebody is not harming you, if somebody is just be a little insufferable because you picked an idiot because maybe you're more of an idiot than you think. Parent together best you can. That's what's really important for these kids. One day we're going to have to figure out this uh, social engineering thing, this factory that's happening in schools. Uh, in the meantime, keep your eyebrows up. Pay attention to what's happening to our kids in schools and our classrooms. Uh, these boys are not coming out skillful like they should at 18. They should be well more along their way in life than they are and to judge them based off their ability to be a man by 20, 21, 25, they haven't had a chance yet. You've kept them literally in the masculine mental darkness for 18 freaking years of the most impressionable years, the most impressionable years. I'm going to tell you guys something. In psychology, it is undoubtedly true that if by four years old you do not socialize a child, after that you cannot socialize that child. I want you to think about how crucial that first four years is for socialization purposes only. And there's a plethora of many more things that matter and the things that we need to know, our skills and our, our knowledge and our experience as youngsters. There's an, a plethora of other things we need to learn. And if you don't learn them by a certain age, good luck ever learning them. And you wonder why people are so jacked up today, especially men in our modern world. 18 years, guys in school, sitting, listening, soft hands, no sunburnt back, no sweat on their brow. It's, it's not okay. This is just not okay. And uh, we got to stop. And until that's the case, we're going to be having these conversations over and over and over until we get these badass men I'm speaking of because we could and we can and we do technically and still have it. Uh, and until this day comes, we're going to have these stupid debates of whether a man's a man or is a woman a man? And can a man be a woman? And can are men like women? And can women do everything a man can do? All this really delusional shit. Until we get our heads on straight, we're going to keep having these dumb conversations. But <laughs> give me something to talk about. I don't mind because that's why I call artistic freedom. I can talk about whatever the hell I want. So I appreciate you guys. I'm going to read through the comments real quick. We're going to sign off here in a minute. <coughs> I did not get to all of the questions, um, but there weren't a whole lot more. So that's okay. They were kind of repeats. Um, <clears throat> there was somebody on Facebook earlier I should mention that says, to the question, does a man need a woman? Someone said no. Men should want a woman. Interesting. Um, very interesting. It's very interesting because uh, it could also be a, a nuanced thing, a play on words, right? It could be semantics only. That's what we're getting down to. Because we're talking about in life. Like right now to go to the grocery store, do I need a man? No. I don't need a man right now to get me to the grocery store. Uh, but au contraire, mon frere, look a little deeper. There would be no shit on your shelves if you didn't have a fucking man, Right. Uh, I don't need a man. I got a car. I got my own job. I pay for all my bills. Yeah, really? You think it's a bunch of women keeping your lights on? You think it's a bunch of women building your fucking neighborhoods and paving your roads, drilling for your oil? Okay. Yeah, you need men. And you, pro and you need us a actually a lot more than we need you for our immediate survival. That's a fact. Because if you just alienated the women for the men, women can't use anything right now that a man has ever made. And men can't use anything right now that a woman's ever been part of making. We would survive for a little while. It wouldn't be great, and we don't want to. And it's hypothetical, so calm down. Calm your tits. And women would pretty much die immediately, if not uh, very, very quickly, if they did not have access to anything men do or maintain in today's modern world. Whether it's ancient or modern, wouldn't really matter. 
you you need us 100%. And we need you and we like you. And that's great because guess what? We have to have each other. So that's it. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Bottom of the comments. Danby, of course, as always. One of my America! Okay. Babysitting. I'm going to scroll down really far because I've skipped a lot. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Wayne is pointing out that uh, as he gets older, he realizes he has more shit to get together. I totally fucking agree. It's like at 40, I thought, man, I just learned some shit. And then at 41, almost 42, I'm like, God, but damn, I keep learning shit. <laughs> like, I thought I was somewhere. And then uh, we're all in our infant stage, guys. You can make it to 100, you're still an infant, at least mentally. <clears throat> yes, Christy, you are totally right. Tambria, thanks for sending the hearts. You guys, I had a really good time tonight. That was fun. I appreciate you as always. You know, this is episode, right? 90, wait, is this 97, 98? What do we say? Now I'm getting lost. I'm having too much fun. I think this is 98. 98, so that means two more. Episode 98. So 99 is next week. Wednesday, I'll see you guys there. Who knows what we're going to talk about? Jeez, where's this go? Who is this guy? What, is, what, are we, who are, what are we doing? What is this? Oh, yeah, Artistic Freedom, episode 98. Next week, 99, and at 100, we're calling it quits for the rest of the summer. I don't know when I'm going to start back. I already told you guys last week uh, I'm taking a break from this, and it's much needed. And uh, I've appreciated you guys, of course, since, and I appreciate you so, so very much. Episode 98 was awesome. 99 is going to be great. And 100, we got to do something special. I still don't have a solid idea. Did you guys see my little blood blister on my finger? Doing electrical damn pliers. So I appreciate you guys. We're going to go out with a bang. Let's find a song. And you guys go ahead and give me all of your uh, sweet messages on the way out while we fade to black. But you guys know I appreciate you, and I've had a lot of fun. So it's been real. It's been fun. Peace out. Have a good night. I will see you next week. <laughs>